All right, good morning. Welcome to the Sweet Talk. Today is Saturday, May 11th, 2019. I am your host, Kim Matina. I am a gold product expert in the Google for Education, CS First, and Jamboard Help Forum. Also a certified Google certified trainer and a technology teacher at the Galloway Township Middle School in New Jersey. And today, I'm so happy to have on the show, Rachel Cupup. Coda, sorry, Rachel. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Um, and Rachel, Rachel and I follow each other on social media and on um, and Instagram, especially on Instagram. And that's where I found uh, Rachel. So it's great to have her on my show. She is a Google certified educator and the head of a digital curriculum and computing teacher in an independent prep boys school in South London. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, because you have a whole bunch of uh, other certifications that um, I think you should mention, because it's um, it's an honor to to be, you know, recognized in all those areas. Fantastic. Thank you. So I'm originally from Australia, as you'll see from the accent. Um, I've been in London now for three years um, and I was previously a classroom teacher and had a passion for using technology and then got started. Um, so I'm a Google Educator Level 2. Um, I'm also an ambassador for Seesaw, Shobi and Book Creator. Um, I'm a Brain Pop certified educator um, and... I love integrating Google products into into the education. Well, I'm so happy to have you on. Um, it's it's so nice to see that um, you know we're all on the same page here as as you know we're trying to integrate technology and help other educators and help people use it effectively. Um, and I love a lot of your Instagram posts that you know align with technology. So um, I'm really thrilled to have you on today. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me on the show. So I know today you're going to be talking about um, Google Expeditions and AR and VR in the classroom. So um, this year I was able to um, participate in the uh, Google Expedition program for my school. And uh, we were able to um, have the experience um, for a whole year. So the kids, oh, wow. the kids were able to experience AR and VR using Google Expeditions, and they were able to go all over the world. And a lot of the students um, really enjoyed it. Um, and they did, some students liked the VR, some students would prefer the AR. It was, it was uh, really um, interesting to hear their perspective of which, which tour or which experience they liked better. So I'd like, it's nice to hear you know, their perspective, but what is your, in, you know, what is your intake on all this? Um, how do you use it? Uh, what did, what did, how did you align it with your, with your subject area? And, you know, tell us, tell us about it. Yeah. So with, um, with Google Expeditions, I initially was using it when it was just VR um, before the AR um, became available to us. Um, and we noticed that once we brought in the AR, just how much the students were so excited to see something come alive and to be able to manipulate it in the classroom as well so they could move it around and they could put their hands around the screen. Uh, and I think that got really exciting. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I've learned since using Expeditions and helping teachers use it is to sort of avoid the surprise aspect of it so we sort of love to sort of go well open your open your devices up and get onto google expeditions and send them straight away but what we miss then is that <laughs> there are sort of some rules that i like to say that are important to set up and i think it just grounds the expedition uh, to sort of focus in that learning aspect of it it's very fun for the the children to use it but i think once you sort of ground in what are the rules how we use our devices and how we explore they know what's going to come up on their screen they know sort of what they can do with it and how it will look um, and i think the key thing is try to think about where you want to use it in terms of your curriculum planning so is it something that you use as a starter so before you even say okay we're going to explore london then we you know, go straight into an expedition and then they try and work out, okay, what is it that we're going to focus on for this new topic or is it that you use it in the middle to sort of 
add some aspect to the learning um or is it something you do to the end so to sort of um almost like a field trip where you'd go on at the end of it all rather than um just sort of throwing it in there at the end just make it meaningful and allow them to explore so it's funny Rachel that um, you mentioned the rules and ground in the students before you even start. Um, I actually did that for um, the teachers and the students as well. Um, so before we started an expedition, I went over how to, you know, join join the tour a little bit, a little bit about the Google Expeditions app, giving them background information about what VR and AR is um, and how to navigate the app how to troubleshoot because okay. the students need to know how to do that as well. And, um, and some rules. So what were some of the rules that you went over um, with your students before you started? Because I find that to be very interesting because I, I did the same thing. Yeah. So my big one is sort of the motion of how they hold the device. So um, some people sort of think about it, you hold the device like you would if you were driving a car. So it just depending on if you're using a, a phone or a tablet, then obviously that control is a little bit different. And then holding it at eye level sort of helps them to picture exactly where that size is, especially if you're using uh, tablets rather than um, the goggles to see um, or Google Cardboard. Um, and once you're there to sort of be able to go up, but then not higher than head height. And this, again, that you go down and just, just for them to understand that actually they don't need to move around. <laughs> so a lot of the young ones will want to walk around the whole classroom thinking that as they move, they're going to see more of it. So I always tell them that they are glued to the floor and they can turn around slowly. Um, otherwise they will miss things if they go too quickly. Yeah, that's my I, key um, one. <laughs> that's that's mine too. Like I always, before we start, I go over and I tell them you have to be sitting down, and I tell them yep. the same thing: like sit on the floor, don't sit in the chair because the chair kind of limits you, um, yep. the mobility. So I tell them all to sit on the floor. And we were fortunate; we were ha we had the goggles, so they would yep. put the phones in the goggles, and they were holding the goggles. So I had to show them, um, you know, how to open the the goggles, how to close it, how to snap the phone in. Um, so a little bit different, but basically like, you know, safety was more of my concern yeah. going over it because a lot of students, um, they said that they got dizzy mm. and they said that, um, you know, I told them if they wore glasses, they could take the gla their glasses off uh, or leave them on. It was up to them. Um, but my number one rule was sit on the floor and you couldn't go like under the tables, you know, yep. you had to sit in the open area. And this is middle school. Um, I'm talking to, you know, seventh and eighth grade students. Um, but yeah, so that, that, okay. That's actually now, did you guys have like selfie sticks or anything like that? No. So we've just done it on tablets. Um, okay. and we just find that because a lot of schools now are sort of struggling for funding and things like that. So being able to use it on a tablet does just make it so much easier because they've got them. We've sort of privileged them with that. We are one-to-one -one for devices. So it means that they can just open the device up and go straight on. We don't have to get the, you know, get Google Cardboard out or get goggles out to go on to an expedition. Okay. Now, did, did you find that the tablets would run hot? No. no. So, no, we haven't had any problems like that. Okay. Yeah, we, we had, you know, we had some devices that were running hot. Um, so, like, when the kids took the phones out of the goggles, they couldn't yeah. believe how hot it was, you know, and then that's because it's just draining. It's running, yeah. it's draining. It's very, it's a very demanding app, but. Okay, yeah. well, that's I'm glad to hear that, you know, somebody else had that same type of mindset, um, because it is important to go over, you know, safety, um, safety rules, and a little bit of, you know, an introduction of what really Google Expeditions is and what it offers. Yeah. So after now, did you have your teachers look for expeditions or tours through um, the spreadsheet or through the app? I always refer them to the spreadsheet. I think that it's so much easier to quickly do a control find and search 
what it is that they're looking for because sometimes it could be one key word that you're looking for that might be one scene within a tour. Uh, so it might not be the whole tour is based on that scene, but there's one scene within the tour. So I think it's just a lot easier to use. If I'm trying to find something really quickly, then I tell the teachers, just open the app <laughs> and quickly search yeah, uh, depending I agree. on what you want to share. Yeah, I agree. I did the same thing. Just go to the spreadsheet, look for it in there. And then it was just easier. It gave you more of a description and it gave you more information on the titles and, and along that. So, all right. Well, the, that, that's good to know that you also did that. The other great thing with the spreadsheet is that there's links to lesson plans as well. So for a lot of expeditions, you can see how other teachers have used an expedition you don't have to sort of think oh what what can I do and how can I guide the questions and how can I stop their focus and bring them back again I found that really helpful to share with teachers okay that's good to know I never really looked at the lesson plan the links in there I just kind of went through and looked at like the description and like what really what are the titles that are being displayed you know and the points of interest there and never really clicked on it so that's a good point to note too as well is to check that out i i do find that some teachers want to look at the tour before they um you know like if they find something in the spreadsheet and they want to they want to check it out they do want to download the app and, and explore, yep. explore it before they actually do it with the kids. I always recommend, recommend that as well because it may not be what you think it is. I would agree as well there because sometimes there are tools where the, the angle of the shot might show something that you don't want the students to see um, and it just means that you know points that you might want to direct them to as well so you know exactly, okay, if we go this way, we can send them off to find what it is that they're looking for. Yeah. Okay. So now how do you, so now we know, you know, we talked about an introduction and, and safety and, and a little bit of ground rules. So now what do you do next when you want to implement it? So I think the next thing is to think about obviously which stage of your lesson you're going to use it in or which stage of your topic. Um, And then also to think about what points of interest I want to take them on. So sometimes within a tour, I might decide, okay, I only want to send them to this point of interest um, on the tour, as well as to think about what questions I want to ask while I'm in the, um, in the expedition. So, Um, some of the questions that I like to think about um, are the observations. So what do you see, hear, think? um, What time of day is it? Um, What do you think you could, you know, notice about the situation? Um, And then some wondering questions as well. So what do you think the weather is like there? Um, Maybe even what might be missing from the expedition is always a good one, I find, um, especially with older students. They're the ones that will quickly say, oh, we couldn't see this, so why couldn't we do this on it? Um, And then also forget to get them to think about how would the expedition look maybe at nighttime or at daytime as well, especially for those younger ones. Um, And then a good one, especially for older students, is to think about the empathy in an expedition. So how is it that you see similar how is the place similar or different to a place that you know Um, and then to think as well is it a place you'd like to visit and get them to sort of prompt that through and I think getting them to stop as well is important sometimes it's really nice to sort of just keep the expedition going but I think being able to stop the expedition get them to reflect and then go back onto it is quite exciting as well all right my dog's barking hold on a second (laughs) Lay down over here. Sit. All right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> the, the dog is barking. Actually, go, go lay down. Today is like, you know, I heard today on the TV, today is like dog mom's day or something. I don't know. They make a day for everything. All right, they do. Um, we actually lost you. We lost your audio. You were you were talking about a lot of good stuff there, and, and unfortunately, no one heard it until the end when you were talking about um, older students with empathy uh, and, okay. and deciding on like if they would want to go visit that place or not. Yep. Do you want me to jump back to the observations then? 
Yeah, if you can, just yeah. briefly. You don't have to go through all of that. Yeah, so think about the senses is one key one that I focus on. So get them to think about what they'd see, what they'd hear or think if they were in that expedition um, and then to wonder, okay, what might be missing from the expedition or how it might look different during the day or at night and maybe what the weather's like in that place as well. Oh, I, I really like that. So it, it kind of gives them a different perspective and to think differently about that location. Yeah. And yeah, I like that idea. It's like, you know, you can kind of put like, like you said, the senses or a theme to it and, and think outside of the box for that, for yes. that location. I like that idea. Very, 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 I like that. I might have <laughs> to try that. I do like that because um, we, you know, the students experienced, um, they went to the Grand Canyon in my classroom. Yep. They went to um, the Great Barrier Reef. They went to Vietnam, uh, the Vietnam Memorial Wall. Um, you know, they explored all different areas. So it's nice to, to bring that perspective in, to, to think outside of the box, like, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you think yeah. should be here? That That's actually, I really, really like that. Thanks for sharing that. That's all right. I think the other key thing um, is to remember as well that it will be very fun and exciting for the first time you use it. Um, so sort of I always find the best thing to do if your students have never used expeditions is to send them on a fun expedition. Maybe it's a place that you're from or maybe a recent holiday destination to start with rather than choosing a lesson mm. sort of based idea. I find that it gets that fun of <laughs> how the expedition works. They get to know and how what, it works. Which one would you recommend? It. Which one would you recommend? Um, as so a I fun always, one. I always do um, something from Australia, only because I, I think it's a nice way to sort of get them to see where I'm from and what it looks a bit like. Um, but I think now as well, um, sort of on a side note with Tour Creator, um, that you can actually create your own tour. So you could put together a virtual reality tour for your students about something and then get them to explore, explore it, sorry, um, in the Expeditions app as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, that might be good for another show. Yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can talk about Tour Creator. Um, but yeah, Tour Creator is available and you can explore your own tour in Google Expedition. So how cool is that? You can make, you can allow the kids to create their own tour and have them see it in, in Google Expeditions. I think they would be so excited to see that, right? Yeah, definitely. Right. Um, so, so talk about a little bit of the VR and the AR. I know that you did a little bit of um, prep work here before the show started. <laughs> so why don't you show off that hard work that you did? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So when you open up expeditions, you've got a whole range of expeditions that will come up. So there's always a new one featured at the top of expeditions, popular AR tours, and then just a whole range of other ones that you'll quickly see on the screen. Um, the important thing is to make sure that you do download them before you start to use them with your students. And once you've downloaded them, I'm going to take you on a virtual reality tour. So once you've downloaded the expedition, hopefully you can see that there. Okay, I'm going to take you on to the Galapagos Islands underwater. So you'll see that it comes up so I can view the Wait, tour. back it up, back it up a little bit, uh, a little forward. That's perfect. Okay. So you get the option to view it, view it in VR or to guide. So when you're in the classroom, you want to guide, which means that your students will be able to join your tour um, as a teacher, if you just want to see what it looks like, then you can view it and you can um, view it in VR as well. So you get that full experience of it. So once you're on, oh, let's try again. Sorry. Technical difficulties. That's okay. So once you're on, you'll see now your expedition will come up and I can move around on the screen once I'm using my device I can actually get the students to move around and they will see that full experience um, in virtual reality um, once I tap onto it one of the great things is that there's already the information that you need to guide the students so you don't need to go and do the history of the place or find out key information because it's already there so as a teacher in a lesson if students start asking questions you can sort of 
have a look and see if it's one of the prompts that's there. Um, the other thing that the expedition has is three level questions. So there's a beginner question, an intermediate question, an advanced question. And one of the beginner questions, for example, is what do Galapagos sea lions eat? And it's got the answer there as well. So for teachers, it's a nice way to sort of have those questions there. You don't have to think too deeply about it. Then underneath, you'll see that there are some expedition um, points that you can send them on to. Once you tap onto one of those, it will then put a little ring. I don't know what you refer to it as. I sort of use it as a marker uh, to tell my students that it's a marker and it just gets them to all focus in. So when you're guiding an expedition, what it does is it will come up with an arrow and the students will see as they follow, they have to follow the arrow until they get to that point. And then you can sort of, as a teacher, read that information to your students um, to highlight it there. I'm going to jump in and show you an AR tool now. Oh, I pre-recorded <laughs> before just so that you can see what it looks like. So with AR, uh, you need to make sure you download the markers first um, and then have those around. You might like to have them on the floor or on tables or different parts of the room so that students can use them. And then well, before you go on, would I just want to clarify, a marker is basically um, similar to a QR code. Mm -hmm. And right, I mean, if you... Yep. Right. And then you would just print them out. It's just they're available to you um, either in the app or I think you can um, you download, can it somewhere download on the them on the website. Too, right? yeah. yeah. So um, it's just a it's just a simple printout. You don't have and to do anything with it. Some teachers often ask because you'll see when you go on to download the markers that there's I think there's four or five markers and they're different colors um, but they're actually, they're the same. So they all start from that same point. They don't, um, some teachers have sort of said, oh, we'd like it to start at different points. It all starts at that one same scene. Uh, so you know your students where they're starting from. Um, and then once you've got those markers, all you do is similar to scanning a QR code, you move your camera around hovering over it and you'll see some dots that will appear and then your AR will suddenly flash before you on the screen uh, so this is the skeleton AR tour so you'll see the skeleton and the information that's there as well that I've just popped up so you can see um, and one of the great things um, with the AR is that you can see that it sort of goes away and then flashes in again and one of the nice things with the skull is that it shows it open and then closes it just like that so it's just really great way for students to be able to see that experience there and they can make it bigger and smaller as well when they're on their screens yeah I was just going to ask you um do you find that the students want to like pinch in and zoom in on the object and manipulate it or do they just look at it on their phone and just you know don't pinch in the students love pinching and moving and sort of trying to f almost get inside the AR tour. So, you know, we did viruses, uh, which is a great AR tour for science. Um, and to see the sort of viruses come alive in the classroom and they're sort of going, oh, my God. And they, they'll just keep pinching and zooming in to sort of see exactly what happens. And it just adds to that whole experience of the tour. Yeah, I agree. I, I really found a lot of the, the kids they, I want to, I want to say a lot of them, I don't know how many students we did it with, how many classes, but I would want to say like a maybe half and half, half like the VR, half like the AR. But the feedback that I got from the kids that liked the AR was that it just focused on one object. You didn't have to like, like, you know, pan around to see different uh, parts of the scene it was just mm. one object that they focused on and some students liked that some students just liked hearing the information about the skull or the spine and yeah and that was it you know so it was nice to hear that perspective and some students rather you use the vr so they can see the whole entire panorama scene you know yeah going to different so it's just a preference but it was nice to hear their perspective of it 
I think the nice thing with the AR is that, it, as you say, it's one tool that they're one specific thing that they're focusing on and they can dive deep into it. Whereas with a panorama, they've, there is so much and they sort of don't know where to stop. And, and even with the direction points, it can they still go, oh, but I want to look at something else on the tour. I was busy focusing on this and now you've redirected me. Yeah, I think I think it could be a little overwhelming. Yeah, you know, the VR, but you know, I mean, it's good to expose the kids to both so that they have the experience and they can figure out what they how they, you know, how they would rather use the tool. So, it's yeah. good to expose them, but yeah. One of the key things I'm going to add in with AR is just to make sure your devices are um, AR compatible. A lot of people sort of get caught up and don't realize that <laughs> they want to go on an AR tour and, and you will be able to use it even if you don't have um, an AR core compatible device um, or the AR kit that you need, you'll still be able to get on and see. It'll just be in a, a white space. You won't be sort of able to see the camera behind it. Um, but if you search uh, on the um, Google website, you'll be able to um, see whether your device is AR compatible or not. So what what app was it that you had to find to see if you were compatible? I'm going to write that down. Oh, I've always just searched um, AR. I think it's AR kit uh, for expeditions. I'll just check it now quickly. Uh, so if you go on the expeditions, just um, edge of Google and then uh, expeditions. And then um, I think down towards the bottom it says if um, check to see if your device is AR compatible. And it's got a whole list of what you need to make sure. Ah, there we go. Sorry. It's in support. So support uh, support.google edu expeditions. And then once that comes up, you'll be able to see uh if you go down what was it support support.google.com.edu uh, forward slash sorry edu and then expeditions uh, i didn't even get that do you want me to say it again so support.google yes. support.google.com uh-huh forward slash uh -huh. edu uh-huh forward slash expeditions, forward slash answer. Answer? Yep. Okay. That's it. And then no. has that come up? No, that's not coming up. And then if you – so let's try it again then. Now I'm coming up to like the uh... – the community form. Yeah, that's right. So, and then if you go on to get expeditions help. Oh, so you want to go to the. Form. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So get expeditions help. And then if you go to. You know what? Let me share my screen. Cause then you can, then you can uh, see where I'm clicking. Yep. And then I'm going to put the link in the show notes. Um, all right. So can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So, okay, I'm at the, so this is the, the, Google, the Google Expedition Community Forum, support.google.com slash forward slash edu float forward slash expeditions. And yep. from here. If you go down to expeditions, FAQ and resources. Okay. And then uh, which one is it? Uh, expedition resources. If I've just... Yep, and then – oh, maybe I've told you the wrong one. All right, let's go back. Build your – oh, no, that's tour creator. Maybe in the FAQ. Ah, uh, yes. No, no, no. So it's in Get Started with Expeditions. Apologies. So oh, Get Started here. with okay. Expeditions and then Expeditions Device Requirements. Okay. That one. Uh, and then okay. underneath in AR, so it's got AR core and then AR kit if you're there using an um, iOS device. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in the show notes too, so that people know um, how to check their equipment. You know, 
Yeah, and the other good thing is the Expeditions Help page does have a lot of really good information on organising kits and um, just being able to guide a tour um, and any troubleshooting problems. One of the big things that we find um, is that there's always Wi-Fi or some kind of problem that ends up happening uh, usually to do with firewalls through schools. So um, it's just a really helpful place um, to refer back to whenever something's not working, we can usually find it straight in this Expeditions Help community. Yeah, um, I I do find that with um, Expeditions, when you, um, if you do get the kit, they give you everything in there, the the devices, the the router, you know, so you really don't need the tech department. I didn't find that I needed to rely on the tech department at all. Yeah. So, which was nice. I just kind of just set it all up and all the devices pointed to the router that came with the kit and I was good to go. So there was no getting involved with the tech department. I didn't have to wait for anybody to, to come and assist with, with my expeditions. Oh, wow. That's, that's really good. Yeah. Cause I had, a, I had a, my own dedicated router that came with the kit. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, sometimes I think the other schools that are in my district, they have the kits and it came with the devices and the actual router so that those devices just use that router, not the yep. Wi-Fi yep. because it's, it would be affecting like the school's bandwidth and stuff like that. So it's better to have a dedicated router so that you don't have any experience, uh, you know, technical difficulties as well either. Yeah, definitely. You know? Well, I, I really appreciate you being on. Like, this was really a great informational uh, show about Google Expeditions, VR and AR. Um, it's nice to see that um, that sometimes, like, I need to be validated as well. And it's nice to hear that you had similar, um, you know, discussions with your students Um as long, you know, and, and validated, like what we were doing was the same, you know, with safety and, and things along that line and helping the teachers search the spreadsheet. So it's nice to, to think that, okay, maybe you are doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why it's nice to, you know, it's nice to share and help each other because it gives you uh, more confidence to, to use the technology and, and to maybe even try taking a risk and doing something different, you know, with, yeah. um, what I also did and I'll share with you too, Rachel is I'll share my presentation with you so that you can use it as well. The, the information that I went over with the kids, um, before we started the expedition. So I'll look for that. I'll, I'll share that with you and then you can, you know, use it as, as you see fit too. Yep. And I can send you those, um, guiding questions as well if that would be helpful to use when you're in a tour. Yeah, that'd be great. Cause I really like those ideas and, and it really um, allowed the students to think at a deeper level. Um, I did have one teacher, um, you know, one, the one teacher wanted to hold students accountable while they were taking the tour. She had them go through uh, Spain and uh, Mexico. It was a world language teacher and uh, she created, you know, we talked about it. She created um, a little worksheet. So the kids had the worksheet in front of them um, yep. while she was going through the tour and she chunked it. So, um, you know, each, there was a lot in there. So she chunked it so that, you know, each, you know, section would pertain to the one, you know, the one title or the one scene. Yeah. And um, the kids were, you know, the kids filled it all out and, and they were able to answer the question. She gave the kids a word bank or whatnot, but it's just so the kids are held accountable. It's not just, you know, a free period where, okay, I'm just going to sit around and not do anything. You got to, you know, account for your, be responsible for your learning. And uh, I really like that a lot. I like that she did that. I think that's a really good good use of um, the expeditions and with the pause capability once you're in a tour as when you're guiding as a teacher, it's really easy to stop them and, and to get their focus back. And um, for using tablets, I find that it's really easy. So I always, one of my other rules is that when that pause screen comes up that their devices come down to waist level and their eyes are then on me and I find that that really 
helps direct them because otherwise they start thinking, oh, I want to tell you what I saw. And, and <laughs> they get, it's, it's easy for them to get off track. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to bring them back down. That's why, yeah, like you said, you can talk to them or if she had like, you know, a, a, a worksheet there. So it's nice to be able to have that simple conversation with them and then continue on, you know? Yeah, definitely. But, yeah. Well, I, I really appreciate you being on. It it's been really great nice to get to on. You. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's really, it was really great to have you on. It's nice to meet you. Um, um, I'm going to, if you don't have any other questions, I'll wrap up the show uh, and I will show everybody where um, the information that you shared is. So let me share my screen real quick. Can you see me or see yep. you? Okay. <laughs> I can see me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, let's go to my website. So www.thesuitetalk.com. And you can um, find all of the information about today's show in the episode page. And I am using Wakelet for um, a curation tool for my show. So the YouTube link for today's show will be listed here. And my show notes are a Wakelet collection. And in here, it, it has all of the information um, for the show, the show notes, um, the Facebook community. I'm going to add a couple more links in here as well that were mentioned. Uh, I, am, I am also using Flipgrid. If you would like to continue the conversation, you can go to Flipgrid and record your response there. Um, different links for my YouTube channel, um, Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play Music um, as well that you can listen to. So Wakelet is my new tool that I'm loving. Um, it's such a great um, and easy tool to use. And it just, it's so easy to keep everything organized in here. So I'm trying it out. I'm trying it. I love it. I'm riding the Wakelet wave right now. Um, so to go back to my website, uh, if you'd like to be a guest on my show, click on the guest page and you can fill out this form as well. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, right now, I'm so thankful I'm scheduling for the fall. Um, so I'm not really taking that much of a break in the summer, but um, I am scheduling already for September, October. So thank you very much for everyone who wants to be on. Um, and you can see the schedule as well on the schedule page. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can click on the subscribe page, subscribe through YouTube um, and my newsletter. And again, I'm on all of these different podcasts, uh, Spotify, Podbean, Apple Play Music, and Google Play Music. And that is basically it. So let me go back. There you are. <laughs> all right. And uh, that wraps up the show for today. So I really appreciate you being on. I learned so much. Um, I always learn something new from all of my guests and that I learned a lot about um, different things on how you use Google Expeditions. And that's what this show is all about is to pay it forward and, and help people, um, you know, gain some type of knowledge that they didn't have before. So thank you for being on and sharing. Thank you. If people want to follow me, um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at tech underscore Miss C. Um, go and follow me and find out more about using technology in the classroom. Yeah. And Rachel has her information in the show notes as well. You can follow her on Twitter too. Um, she's got a lot of great um, resources. I would highly recommend um, following her and learning from her as well. So um, if you have any other questions for her, um, her information's in the show notes. You can always reach out to her too. Sounds good. Always happy to help. <laughs> All right. So until next time, have a great day. Talk Thank to you, you soon. Talk Bye. to you soon. Bye.